Thank you, everyone, for joining us at the Project Censored radio show. We're very glad right now to be joined by Mark Burroughs, who was hired out as a brakeman at the Chicago and Northwestern Railroad, now the Union Pacific in Chicago in 1974, and soon became a locomotive engineer. He worked at the SOO line Canadian Pacific Railway from 1991 until he retired in December 2015. He was also active in the United Transportation Union's 47-day strike in 1994 and served as the delegate for Local 1433 at the UTU's final convention in 2011 and the inaugural convention of the Sheet Metal Air Rail and Transportation Workers Union Transportation Division in 2014. He has been a member of RWU for over 10 years and served as co-chair and organizer in the past. And he now contributes a regular commentary to and is the editor of the quarterly newsletter for RWU, The Highball. Mark, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. So there is just so much to discuss and we could sit here for days uh, and dig into this corruption, greeds, greed and words I can't say on air. Um, and but I want to start off with uh, kind of a, 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 sh a very sharp juxtaposition, uh, just so people know what we're looking at. Uh, according to a collection of data compiled by the Groundwork Collaborative, a handful of major rail companies reported more than $10 billion in buybacks and dividends over the first six months of 2022. And this comes after record profits in general. BNSF made $1.7 billion net income just in the fourth quarter of 2021. Um, and back in May, at the same time, The Hill reported that over the last six years, the leading freight carriers laid off 45,000 employees, or nearly 30% of their combined workforce. Most of the layoffs came before the pandemic, which ushered in a huge demand for shift, shipped items. Uh, and at the same time, rail carriers are pushing remaining workers beyond limits that are safe and ethical, uh, limits that don't only, don't only just affect the workers and their families, but entire communities. Uh, for instance, there's the push to eliminate two-person crews on class one trains, making the work of ensuring safe transportation of hazardous and dangerous materials a one-person job, a very tired and overworked one-person job. So that's just... A, a, a little brief snapshot uh, that you can dig into more, but could you talk about this juxt juxtaposition between these record profits and the rail workers' uh, work realities? Well, you could you could uh, you could put an equal sign right there uh, between the uh, record obscene profits and the um, uh, the the barbaric unethical and I, I would add immoral working conditions that, that rail workers uh, work under. Uh, I, I mean, it, uh, it, it, it was barbaric when I managed to get out of there, uh, you know, five, five plus years ago, uh, I, I felt like I was getting uh, released from prison and, uh, and, 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 it, and it's only gotten worse. And, um, and this is a common thing in, in, in all industries. I mean, speed up takes takes different forms, whether whether you're speeding up an assembly line or or brutalizing warehouse workers at, at Amazon. Uh, um, in, in the context of the railroad, uh, uh, it, 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 it's about just maximizing production exploitation out of fewer and fewer uh, human beings and, 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 and everywhere it's the same thing. Blood money over time is more cost when any time where you have a situation where you have a contract with halfway respectable benefits, blood money over time is, is always more cost effective uh, uh, to, to pay blood money over time to fewer and fewer employees and, and work them to death. That's always more cost effective just on the benefits alone of, of the reduced bare bone minimal staffing. Um, uh, so, so th th that's a, you know, th th that's a, that's a big part of it. There's, there's obviously more to it, but um, I'll, I'll leave it there for now. Yeah. I mean, again, there's, there's absolutely no shortage of, uh, of things to dig into. And I, and I appreciate that you said that it was barbaric when you worked there, because I think it's important to highlight that um, this, this is not a new story. 
uh, in the sense that railroad workers have been pushed, kicked, betrayed, and abused by the industry for a long time. Uh, and it's just that now this is this is bubbling up to a point where it can't be ignored uh, any longer. But I I want to dig in more to to specifically like that barbarism uh, that you mentioned. And um, one rail worker who I who I saw had posted online said that uh, in the midst of a pandemic. He had to work extra hours without fair pay. He slept in his car uh, and would work too soon after a long shift in unsafe conditions. He missed doctor's visits, family's funerals, uh, missed events and things with his kids. Um, and so this, this is a reality that I think a lot of people don't know about. And so it's not like these people are working at uh, a Starbucks. You know, this is like a mobile workplace, shifting schedules, I mean, can you talk about some of the some of that barbarism that that you that you touched on? So, um, uh, um, so when I started, um, a typical uh, uh, switching crew would be three ground gr ground persons and an engineer, and sometimes the engineer would have a fireman. Obviously, we weren't shoving shoveling coal anymore, but. Uh, uh, um, firemen would float between being set up as engineers and and uh, so so if, if you were in a fireman status you could serve as an assistant engineer and so sometimes you would actually have five crews but 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 or a, a five five member crews and and that would be on road trains or in the yard and and um this made for a semi-dignified uh working operation uh, uh um i mean we, we'd flat switch in the yard and it'd be like poetry in motion uh when, when everybody w was in sync and um um and and even then a lot of us especially when you're new when you start out you're on this 24 7 extra board uh um you're on call uh seven days uh 24 hours seven days uh go to work on two hours notice usually most of the time and the difference was back then you could work you you could binge work a lot but then when you wanted to take time off uh you wanted to go to a concert uh your, your kid was having a play uh your your other kid was having a ball game you could do that there there there, there was sufficient reserve manpower it was just kind of an unwritten understanding of work 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 like a dog but then take off when you you know when you needed to, and and uh, so that was the trade-off, and and we all kind of accepted it, and um, uh, then over the years, th that just started getting squeezed more. The the three ground person became two ground person and a utility man who uh, who would float between work and being the third man with this crew and the third person with that crew. Um, then then engineer conductor only uh, with you know, with utility men floating around. Then they got rid of the utility men, and and um, uh, um, so so it's uh, and and then around the mid '90s they started saying, oh, you can't lay off. You can only lay off uh, one day a month, and 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 this is when the barbarism just really set in, where where you're just working around the clock. Federal federal law. Um, uh, we would have to have eight hours off duty. This prior to 2008, we, we would have to uh, require that we had had to have eight hours off duty. Well, that didn't include the two hour call. Um, and and so so you you could you could work from eight to four, um, drive home, maybe get a bite to eat. And, and, and they're calling you in six hours to come back to work at midnight. Uh, so we called that spinning, eight on, eight off, eight on, eight off. Um, uh, the law says you can only work for 12 hours, uh, meaning you can only turn, turn a wheel for 12 hours. But, uh, um, and, and, and back then, if you, if, if, if you work 12 hours, you'd get uh, 10 hours rest. In 2008, they, there, there was a period... Of, there were a couple weeks where I was getting brutalized, where, where me and another coworker tallied it up. We actually worked over a hundred hundred hours in a given week. Okay, and 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 we're fatigued. We're running through your neighborhood uh, with ammonia and, and hazardous commodities. Um, 
So in 2008, after decades of, um, you, you know, whenever there's a derailment or major injury, the National uh, uh, Transportation Safety Board comes in and investigates and, and maybe a year and a half later, they publish their report. Uh, before, before you could access them online, you know, that might be a little paragraph in page 17 of, of the newspaper or something like that. But um, uh, for decades, and, and, and they would go, what was this person's work history for the last week, uh, uh, for the last two weeks? And, and it was not uncommon for them to come right out and say that fatigue was a contributing factor. That, that oh, Bill, the, this engineer fell asleep because he'd been turning and burning and he ran into the, he ran into the caboose and the head end crew died and the, the guys in the caboose died and fatigue was a factor. And, and sometimes they would make recommendations, but they, they don't have any teeth. But, but after just decades of documented fatigue related incidents, fatalities, uh, disabling injuries, Congress passed the Rail Safety Act, um, giving us a little bit of a breather. So instead of eight hours off, they, they, they said, oh, okay, you have to get 10 undisturbed. So, so that kind of stopped the getting called in six hours from the time you left, but they could get by that. Um, if, if they wanted you to come back on your legally mandated rest, they would just tell you ahead of time. So, so come back here in 10 hours. And so this way, they're not disturbing the 10 hours. Uh, they couldn't call you for 10 hours, but they could tell you before you left, come back in 10 hours and there's your 10 undisturbed. So, so you got a couple hours, uh, you know, a, a couple hours more relief. Um, um, the, the federal legislation mandated that if you work six consecutive days, that you had to get uh, 24, 24 hours off. And, 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 and note I say 24 hours and not a real calendar day. Uh, um, um, uh, and and a, a real calendar day would be uh, 24 and 16, 40 hours. Um, and, uh, uh, but, but, but they would say, if you work six, six consecutive starts, so then they would get around that. By the time you were getting to your sixth start in a calendar day if you were getting close to like 10 11 o'clock well they would just hold you here we won't call this guy till not 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 five five after midnight that breaks the six consecutive calendar days and and then boom you're yeah uh uh, uh you know that, that then you're starting a new six day six day clock they they made it uh six days you get one day and or 24 hours and if you work seven starts i i think it was 48 hours but so so for all intents and purposes rail workers outside of there are various local some local property agreements when uh um uh when i left the canadian pacific the hunter harrison and the precision scheduled railroading had a blood money agreement where where, where they uh, um, everybody got 48 hours off, um, uh, but they had to give up all their dignity and, and work rules. And, you know, that, that's a whole nother story. But the vast bulk of the rail workers that, that are in this current negotiating, uh, the, 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 other, the other major class one railroads, for all intents and purposes, for the most part, are working on call seven days a week, um, uh, 24 hours, seven days a week. And, and then to add to it, um, they, they had made these, the, these, uh, 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 these manpower cuts before the pandemic. Then when the pandemic hit, um, uh, um, they were slow in uh, um, part of the nature of the work. You're, you're coo if, if you're on a road train, you're, you're cooped up in a small little engine cab with, 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 with another worker. And, um, uh, uh, and if you're, a lot of times you're transporting in crew vans, um, um, your train dies for time. And so you have to get relieved or, or, you're, or you have to go relieve a, a train crew that has, has their, their, their legal time. And, and so a common part of the job is getting transported in these crew vans 
um, the, the, there, there was no six foot distancing in, in these crew vans and, and, and they were slow in implementing the CDC guidelines. At a certain point, they started mandating masks and all of that stuff. I don't have the statistics for how many rail workers got, got COVID, but uh, uh, I, I, you know, I, I know some who did. And um, uh, um, so then, then when, when they started implementing when they started uh, falling under CDC guidelines and quarantining and all that stuff, then they, they were, they were really shorthanded. Be, pe people would have to take off uh, mandated if they tested the positive and, and they were just ridiculously shorthanded and they appealed to the federal government for a waiver to uh, um, get an exemption on decades of safety rules. Say, if you want us to move the freight, uh, you, you're going to have to, uh, uh, you're going to have to relax these safety rules and regulations, um, and uh, um, uh, and and then that's when they started implementing these attendance policies to the point where th th that's kind of a new thing in in the last uh, couple of years where where uh, you you are allowed X amount of points before you get to the point of termination, and so. Um, uh, um, uh, you know, you lay off sick, uh, you're going to get points. Uh, you lay off to go to your daughter's wedding, you're going to get points. Um, and if you lay off on a weekend, then you're even going to get more points. And and um, and and so this forces people to to um, uh, um, to to come in when they're when they're sick. There's a story uh, about this guy on the Burlington Northern who. Who, who was not feeling right and, and he hesitated to go to the doctor because he didn't want to rack up these, these demerit points and he ended up dying of a heart attack on the engine. And, and um, uh, um, so, uh, um, um, yeah, so, so, so th th this is why, yeah, it, it's, it's, been, it's been accumulating for decades and, and it's just got to the point where where it, it's just over the top. It, 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 it's really over the top. And that's why when, when the engineers and conductors union uh, uh, put out strike authorization poll votes, um, they were 98, 99%. Um, so, so that's an indication of, of the, the discontent. And we've never seen the, the people leaving the industry in the hundreds, I, uh, it, it, um, um, uh, people with that, that in the past would invest seniority and, and uh, invest years that they've just said, I've had it, I, I can't take it. I, I, and and uh, for the first time, one of my former coworkers, um, signing bonuses to, to offer to, to people to come work, uh, that's kind of, that, that comes and goes the last, several years depending on the the market supply and demand but for the first time my my coworker w was telling me that they're giving referral bonuses so if, if he brings friend or family uh and they get hired you know they'll get he'll, he'll get a few thousand dollars and and in the past we would not hesitate we would all try to get our friends on we would try to get our our family on and and now we, we, we wouldn't wish this on our worst enemy. So, so nobody's bringing family or friends in and, and, and they're really, you know, some might try to bring their worst enemies in, but, but that, that would be about it. Yeah, no, it sounds like nothing that I would want uh, friends or family <laughs> involved in either. Um, and yeah, I, I I'd read about this this point system, the high vis policy, as as BNSF calls it, um, and as reported by the Real News, each rail worker is given a balance of thirty points. Workers who quote mark off, take unscheduled days off, receive a penalty anywhere from two to twenty five points off the balance. If the balance drops at zero at any time, the worker is subjected to disciplinary action, and the point total is then reset to fifteen though. Uh, and if the balance drops to zero three times, the worker is fired. And this sounds like a really horrific, 
like Hunger Games or something. Like, it sounds like a video game, like game over. Like, it's so sick. And like, you're, you're, I mean, you're toying with people's lives and the ability to, as you said, like not show up to work if you are at risk of having a heart attack, which apparently this person was. Um, and so I, I appreciate you sharing those realities because that is uh, very important to understand as we talk about the context of, uh, of, of these dealings. And I want to talk more about that, the insidio insidious dealings of, the, in particular, these CEOs and the industry bigwigs, uh, firstly, in terms of what one railroad worker called, quote, corporate terrorism, holding an entire industry hostage, hostage for the sake of profit, i.e. taking advantage of global supply chain issues like war and COVID, and then worsening them through various anti-worker tactics that you've already mentioned, as well as cutting services and putting embargoes on interstate commerce, and then to add insult to injury, demonizing workers in the media uh, so that when this story is covered, it makes workers, railroad workers, look like the bad guys. Can you talk a little bit about that? And particularly, you know, because Project Censored talks about what the corporate media won't talk about, like what is important about that, that coverage that they're getting wrong? I, um, yeah, when I saw that term corporate terrorism, I thought, wow, uh, I, I wish I would have thought of that. And, and uh, um, um, yeah, but, but that's exactly what it is, what, what it was, especially, especially as we got close to the, to, to the deadline of the most recent cooling off period, which I believe was uh, September 16th, I believe. And, and uh, in, in, in the week or two preceding that, um, uh, the carriers, uh, uh, the, oh, they're, they're not gonna ship this and they're not gonna ship that in anticipation of a strike. Uh, uh, Amtrak is gonna cut its long distance routes. Um, I, I, you know, I, and then of course, you know, the local news covers this, you know, from the human interest story, the, this poor family who's stuck in Union Station, they were trying to get from point A to B to C and, and they're just stranded. And, and, and it's heartbreaking. And, 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 and you even hear, you know, farmers complaining and, 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 and shippers of different commodities complaining. And, and, and it all falls on the fault of the carrier. Uh, um, they are the bad guy. And, 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 and yeah, but we're getting our story out a little bit. Um, and uh, but but it's still very disproportionate. It, 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 it's still very, very, very disproportionate. And um, um, but uh, um, uh, yeah, and, and the obscene profits. I wanted to back up one second. There, there was just one more example of barbarism. And, 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 and um, um, I, so a common in, in the yards, uh, um, uh, uh, it, it's common to have little shanties, little shacks that maybe, you know, two to three people might, might fit in at certain strategic points um, uh, in, in our yard at CP Bensonville, where you, 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 you pull trains from the classification yard and then pull them into the makeup yard and blah, blah, blah. And, 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 and so these were points where the, the conductor or hind man or you person they'd be out in the elements for a while waiting for this movement to, to finish. And so it gave them a chance. If it's 50 below wind chill, it gave them a chance to, to get out of the elements for a little bit, to just get a little refresher. Um, uh, um, if it's hundred degree plus heat index, they even had the little had little window air conditioners. And so you could, you, you could cool, but part of getting through working in the elements is to get an occasional break. Uh, um, and, and um, uh, you know, the, these guys that, that, that work outside, they're, they're dressed for them, but, but it, it's one thing to be doing physical work in 50 below and you're all bundled up with your car hearts and everything. And it's another thing, you, you're just kind of standing still waiting and then you're trying to make up two mile long trains and everybody's blocking each other like, like, like a standoff. And, and and, and at least they had these shanties, these little shanties in the middle of the yards where they could go and get relief. And they took those out to save a few bucks, to save on the electricity for the air conditioning, 
to save a few bucks for the heat. And, and um, um, they used to have, they, they, they used to have uh, um, Kubotas where, 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 when you needed to protect a shove, uh, protect the movement in the yard, um, people could get in place and, 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 and one person could take care of that. They got rid of the job. They got rid of those, for the most part, those vehicles. And so now everybody's, if, if you have to protect the movement, you're riding, hanging onto the side of a box car for a mile, a mile long shove. And, you know, it's one thing on a nice day, but when it's 50 below or, or hundred degrees, um, that that's just an extra added, uh, uh, difficulty added to the job needlessly so that these, these, um, modern day rail robber barons can make seven figure salaries for doing, I don't know what. Well, yeah. I mean, they don't do anything. Of course <laughs> that's, that's, that's their job is to do nothing. Um, and to steal not just people's livelihoods, but people's lives. I mean, what you're describing is basically, it almost sounds like, uh, and I think somebody described it this way in, in a piece that I read that it's a game of Russian roulette. Like how, how far can we push people before th they die, which obviously these CEOs don't uh, seem to care about, but that the whole industry goes under. And, um, and obviously that's what's, that's what being, being, uh, you know, that's, that's where we're at the precipice of now. Uh, and so, so much so that, you know, the, the Biden administration stepped in, uh, the, uh, the presidential emergency board had a hearing, uh, where I thought it was really quite amazing that the rail carriers told the, the PEB, the presidential emergency board, quote, capital investment and risk are the reasons for profits, not contributions by labor. In which case I would say, then they shouldn't mind a strike because if labor is contributing nothing, then what do you have to lose? Uh, but of course, as experts on economy have pointed out, a rail strike could cost the U.S. economy two billion dollars a day, uh, which is of course why Biden and friends even cared in the first place. Um, and so that's a lot of power in the corner of railroad workers. So I'm curious where. Where is the situation at right now? I mean, uh, for folks listening, we're recording this on Thursday, uh, September 29th. But what is the what is the feeling like? What is the, the the temperature check right now? Do you feel? So what I'm getting from talking to uh, uh, former coworker, you know, people that I say I, I just went to my union meeting a couple nights ago, um, and and. Uh, and, and from other, what I'm getting from just the, the feel on the ground from, from fellow RWU members who are working and the feedback that they're getting from their coworkers, the, the, the buzz on our Facebook page, which is a, 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 is a, a sounding board. And one of the things that comes up is uh, uh, um, uh, they'll say, yeah, yeah, the uh, uh, smart shut down their comment page, uh, BLET shut down their comment page. So, so we have this page and, and, and people who are not RWU members are free to come on and just, you know, uh, uh, say what's on their mind. And, 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 and it serves as a, 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 a useful sounding board. Um, and, and, and so the bottom line is just everywhere, the buzz that, that, uh, um, that, that, I, that I'm hearing and, and everybody concurs uh, that, that, that I talked to, um, that, um, uh, um, rail workers are totally dissatisfied. Now they have not even gotten all the details. All that's come out right now is just a synopsis and, 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 and yes, uh, Biden was able to twist the, uh, carrier's arms to get a, a few token pathetic bones with no meat on them for optics. Uh, um, but, 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 uh, um, uh, so, so the union leaders can say here, we got this and, and here we got that. But, but when you, when you unpack it, 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 it's, it, it's a whole lot of very little and, and, um, uh, uh, a lot of things are, are, um, um, Okay, so we will discuss uh, a, a, some some uh, a voluntary days off. 
but there's nothing in black and white. It's that, okay, you can negotiate, the, the carriers will negotiate that with, in, with individual carriers. And if we can't come to an agreement, then it'll go to arbitration. That's par for the course of past national agreements where, where all kinds of stuff is left gray to be hammered out and fine tuned later. And um, um, uh, need, needless to say, that never works out very well for, uh, for, for, for the workers. And, and, and so, uh, um, yeah, there's a, 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 there's a very, very good chance that, um, that uh, uh, the, these tentative agreements that, you know, uh, uh, brought a temporary end to the possibility of a strike, uh, um, it, it's quite possible that these could be voted no. There, there's some X factors. Um, uh, there, there's definitely some people who are, who have been waiting for two, you know, for the last two or three years for, for the back pay check uh, um, and, and, and those who were thinking about quitting, you know, well, geez, if I hang on till this thing's resolved, I can, I'll get a few thousand dollars and then I'll quit. So there, there is an X factor of those who would vote for it just for that reason. Um, um, some workers are just going to get fatigued. Uh, some just want it over. Some are going to feel demoralized that, you know, even if I vote it down, then then Biden and Congress is just going to ram this down our throats anyway. And um, but 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 the temperature check is hot. It, it 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 is hot. Where it goes and how that plays out, that that remains to be seen. But 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 it's it's definitely hot. And and I and I just want to add on the whole idea of a strike and the you know what it would cost the economy and all of that. Railroad workers do not want to destroy the economy. Railroad workers do not want to uh, sabotage an already fragile economy and, and further disrupt an already dysfunctional supply chain uh, be because of how the carriers have operated. And railroad workers, their friends and family, they need beer and all the other consumer commodities that, that you know, could get disrupted. So, so nobody wants that, but, but, but this is the last resort uh, uh, um, to, to, to resist the, this um, one-sided class warfare. Yeah, and, and Mark, I appreciate you highlighting that because I think that is important to note, particularly with the demonization of, uh, of railroad, I can't say that word, railroad workers. <laughs> Uh, with the demonization of workers that's been happening in the corporate media. I mean, uh, for folks listening, if you've never spoken to people who have been part of a strike, who have thought of one, I've never met anybody in, you know, the, the, the more than 10 years of journalism that I've done and speaking to union members. Uh, I've never heard one person that was like, yeah, I'm really excited for the disruption that this is going to cause everyone. <laughs> like, that's not why you, that is why a strike is the last resort, uh, because it is disruptive also to the workers themselves. I mean, it's not like standing uh, in strike on a picket line or something like that, or just not going to work at all is like the best option that they have. Uh, so I think that that's, I'm, I'm very glad that you highlighted that. Um, and so I'm curious also, like in terms of what you're talking about with the, with the temperature check and people feeling different ways, what is the timeline that we're at right now? Like, what are we looking at coming up uh, in the fall in terms of votes or in terms of going back to the negotiating table or, or, or things like that? So the way I'm understanding it, so synopsis uh, summaries have been mailed out to the different bargaining committees, uh, the general chairman of, of uh, the respective unions on the respective properties and, and there's, there's going to be uh, question and answer sessions. Uh, some of those may be in person, some of those may be Zoom. Uh, so th there will be a period for that. Um, uh, um, and, and there may be a little feedback, there may be uh, what, what the BLET statement said that, you know, that there will be soliciting some input. And, and so, uh, 
uh, um, uh, they, they may take some of that input and then come back to the carriers um, for, to, to really hammer out the, the, the verbiage, um, which will then be presented to, uh, to, to, to the memberships for a ratification, uh, for a ratification vote. And so by the time, by the time it gets to that stage, they're projecting uh, towards the middle, middle end of November at, at best. Um, there, 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 there haven't been any real finite timelines, but, but uh, 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 that, that, that seems to be the general projection. And um, uh, I'm sure it's purely coincidental, but, but that'll be after the midterm elections. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that wasn't a factor in, in any of this. Uh, uh, I, I yeah. can't, you know, I, I, I can't say it, state it as a fact, so, you know, uh, uh, so. <laughs> but it does make one wonder, does it not? Um, <laughs> uh, well, and I, I, I am also curious about uh, what happens in the meantime, like are, are workers then experiencing retaliation because this is an ongoing threat of a strike? Uh, d d d have you heard anything like that happening? I haven't heard of, of anything like that. Um, uh, um, it's pretty hard for them to terrorize us much more than they already are. So, so I, I haven't heard of any, uh, 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 I, I mean, we've, We've had other members of, of uh, Railroad Workers United um, uh, that are working and have been quoted prominently in, in some different press. And um, uh, uh, so far, none of them have been axed, you know, cross our fingers. And uh, uh, um, intimidation and harassment towards um, uh, people who stand up, that, that's not new. That, that's kind of always been one, uh, an old saying on the railroad, uh, the, you know, the more conservative types would, would uh, you know, you, you, want, you know, you better, you, you want to keep a low profile there because, because if they want to get you, they, they can and will. And that is true to an extent. And, and, um, um, and, and all I can do is just, we, we, when, we, when we know that we're outspoken, we, we just try to dot our I's and cross our T's and, uh, make sure that we're in compliance, which is not easy to do considering we have volumes of, of different rule books. And, and then on top of the rule books, you have daily, uh, you have general orders and things that changes uh, uh, page two on this rule book, uh, this paragraph, second line is changed to read this. And um, uh, uh, so, so uh, but, but we all do our best, the, the best we can to uh, walk the straight and narrow line to uh, make it harder make it harder for them to uh to victimize us yeah absolutely and i i, I understand um and so finally I'm, I'm i am curious because this is and i understand if this is an awkward question um but particularly because rwu is a more recent union like if you compare it to like things like the uaw or umwa um how do rank and file feel about the union leadership and the way that they're represented by union leadership in these dealings? Well, first, uh, just a minor question. So, so Railroad Workers United it is not a union per se. We're, we're, we're a, we're a best, uh, the, the best way to consider us would be an opposition caucus of rank and file workers uh, trying to work within each of the 12 respective unions uh, uh, to to uh, push towards uh, uh, unity, solidarity, internal democracy, and, and trying to find a way to to act as one. Because that that's when when if the question gets posed, how did it get so bad? That is the fundamental reason that 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 be, because they they played divide and conquer o over these years, and and uh, uh, the same conditions that led uh, Eugene Debs. Uh, back in the uh, 1893, 1894 to uh, uh, organize the American Railway Union, be, uh, trying to organize railroad workers into one industrial union because he was tired of the backstabbing and the scabbing of different unions. And uh, 
Um, uh, uh, the American Railway Union was crushed in the aftermath of the Pullman strike. And, um, and, and we feel we're trying to, we've been, we, we founded in 2008. And so we've been trying to pick up on that legacy of, of trying to organize uh, rail workers to act and unite as one, whatever form that takes. Um, um, uh, and, and if you, all the years that I worked, if, if people would grumble, uh, uh, why are we in 12, to, why are we, in, you know, 13, 14, you know, now it's about 12 before it was 13, 14, 50, you know, why are we in so many unions? We should all be as one. That's kind of been a common sentiment that we should all be in, 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 in one union, that, that, that this whole di divide and conquer thing plays only into the hands of the carriers. Um, and, and, and the average worker, they've, they've always, uh, it, They've always been less than satisfied with with the union leadership, but but with what's going down right now, um, they 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 they're really hot. And and you see these comments, you know, uh, oh oh uh, oh the, the unions, you know the the, the unions, uh, um, you know rollicking with the carriers. Uh, uh, oh the the union leader, he took a big bushel of money, a briefcase full of money, and and. Um, um, and while it reflects the sentiment of, of, of being disgruntled uh, with the existing leadership as it's presently constituted, those thoughts are really an obstacle to avoid getting at the real issues, which, which uh, um, that uh, um, they just have a different thought process. Their, their, their thought process is to uh, um, uh, make a deal and collaborate uh, with with the bosses and and the starting point is 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 what you know what will they give us and and what I and we try to advocate is our starting point has to be what are we entitled to as workers and what are we entitled to as human beings let's start from there and then uh, once we have a collective democratic discussion and and figure you know some kind of consensus on that, then let's figure out how we go about trying to make that happen. Uh, um, uh, we're still a ways from that, but that's what we're, that's what we strive for. Uh, uh, and and um, certainly in the aftermath of however this plays out, uh, we're, we're, we're confident we will continue to gain more and more of a hearing and to try to tap into that um, there's anger and frustration, but it also it 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 can degenerate into demoralization when there's no when there's nothing on the horizon when there when there's no uh, um, sign of anything to, to hope for and 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 one thing we we, we try to uh, inspire with with um, uh, with the lessons of of of, of labor's history and. Um, uh, and people resisting right now today and, and to, to, to find a way to be a part of that and um, to not let demoralization, but, but to let that, to, to turn that anger into a constructive outlet that, that finds its way to, to find a way towards um, dignified resistance. Very well put. And uh, I, I love, I love the idea of bringing up the past to uh, to help contextualize the present and, and get inspiration from. Um, so, Mark, thank you so much for 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 sharing all of this important uh, uh, context and reality with people who are certainly not getting it from corporate media. Uh, where should folks go to keep up to date on what's going on, or where's a good place to follow this story? Um, our website. Uh, railroadworkersunited.org. Uh, when you go to the website, there should be a uh, pop-up that invites you to get on our mailing list and uh, fill that out. And, and, and among other things, we put out a, uh, a, a weekly email newsletter, which, um, which captures some of the most um, uh, up-to-date stories and analysis of what's going on and so obviously the last several weeks it, it's been heavily weighted toward towards all of this 
um, and um, uh, um, uh, people can join and, and get a, uh, uh, when, when you join, uh, you, you get a copy of the quarterly newsletter mailed to you. But even if you don't join and just get on the mailing list, then eventually the, the uh, email version of the high ball, which comes out uh, quarterly, I'm going to start working on it any day now. I've been backed up. And, and uh, um, uh, uh, so, so just getting on the mailing list, you'll get the weekly, weekly news summary, as well as um, uh, the, the uh, quarterly newsletter, the email version uh, when, when it comes out. Uh, so that's a starting point, and and then there's um, uh, there's links to contact us and and all of that. But um, the website's a good place to start. Well, we're grateful to the internets for making that <laughs> possible. <laughs> Don't trust corporate media. Go to the actual source. Uh, and so, Mark, thank you again for taking the time, and uh, all of us here at Project Censored are pulling for you and the your fellow. Uh, rail workers. Thank you very much on behalf of Railroad Workers United for, for having us on and, and to, uh, to be able to present our case. It's, uh, we're up against a lot of opposition. You were, you know, it's, it's kind of disproportionate, us, you know, so in, in, in any, uh, any arena that we have to be able to get our story, we're, we're greatly appreciated and, and personally uh, um, uh, greatly appreciative and honored to be here. So thank you very much. Thank you.